Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today's a very exciting day, a day that most people don't get in their lifetime, and I'm so excited to share that with you guys here today. So let's get into it. So today was a super exciting day. I got to meet the man that saved my life. For those of you who don't know, but I'm sure you do, on August 17th of last year, I was in a horrific car accident that almost cost me my life. But there was a hero there that day. In all aspects of there being a hero, John was it that day. For those of you who don't know, John was the bystander that day that got in my car, stabilized my neck, and prevented me from completely severing my spinal cord at the C2 level, and from completely shredding through that artery that I dissected in my neck. And that's huge. <laughs> That is why I'm able to be so functional today and why I'm able to sit here and do this right now. Um, there was a lot of discussion early on. Like, we heard that John was a retired firefighter. That's how he knew what to do. We heard that, um, that he was a firefighter there that day. There was a lot of, like, pieces that, you know, were kind of just thrown together. Me and my family didn't actually even know what John's name was at first. I remember waking up and saying, I think his name is John. I think that's what he said to me. Um, either way, he's an angel, and we just ended up calling him Angel John. Even to this day, he's saved as Angel John in my phone as a contact. Um, and thank God for the internet, because my granny searched high and low for this man, and ended up finding his daughter, and that's how we were able to get a hold of John. And my granny got a hold of this um, man's daughter, and I just gave her my phone number. I didn't want John to feel pressured into, you know, having to come talk to me, having to have a conversation with me. Some people don't want that after. Some people just want to help him move on. They don't want to be involved, you know. So I didn't want him to feel pressured. So I left it kind of open to him. And almost right after I gave my phone number to them, I got a text in the hospital that Ryan read to me. And it was just that, um, hi, this is John. I'm glad you're doing all right. I'm glad you're doing well. Um, keep fighting kind of thing. And we've kind of texted intermittently now through this entire time, which is pretty amazing. It's raining. That's what that sound is. <laughs> I'm in my sunroom. Um, but we've kind of stayed in contact. And because of COVID and my recovery, we haven't been able to have him over um, since, you know, he saved me. We said thank you a million times, but... I knew that there was never going to be words or um, gifts or a gesture that was ever going to be able to fully encompass what John did for me that day. And I wasn't even really sure if he knew the magnitude of what he did. Early on at the hospital, one of the doctors that came in said that, um, I just kind of heard your story from one of the nurses. And kid, I'm not sure what to tell you. Um, I don't say this very often, but you're incredibly lucky. And the person that, you know, got in your car, he saved you. Because if you would have been left to thrash around in the car, they say the way you say you were, you probably would have completely severed your spinal cord, leaving you a complete quadriplegic from neck down, or you would have completely severed through that artery, resulting in a massive bleeder stroke. None of which happened. And I think you hear these things. I think you hear them and you're shocked. Because when you think of a hero, everyone thinks of men in capes and superheroes on the TV, saving the good guys from the bad guys. That's what you think a hero is. You never think you're going to need one, and you never think you're going to be able to meet one. <laughs> and uh, we, I've, just, I've said thank you to John maybe a million times, it feels like now, knowing that that was never going to be big enough. And the story kind of goes, so John was the truck, there was a car in front of him, and then the truck that went into the median when it was unsafe to do so. John said he was paying attention to the vehicle in front of him because he was coming to a stop sign, didn't want to rear end them. When he heard the bang, he was like, it sounded like an explosion. And there was pieces of your car flying all over the place. He's like, and then I realized that there was an accident right in front of me. And he was like, it just instantly clicked in. The car that was in front of him pulled to the side and John was trying to call 911, but I guess there had already been so many people that seen what happened. Had... They had, everyone was on the line with 911, it was busy. So John told the guy who finally got through, you stay on the phone with him, I'm going to help her. And John said something, and I'm going to try to pull up the clip here. I have a little video of when he first came in. Um, I'm going to try to pull it up. I was surprised you were alive. And I'm being honest when I say that. I think you know that. But he says that, honestly, Brianna, when I seen your vehicle, I didn't think that you were alive in there. I didn't think there would ever be any kind of possibility that somebody was alive in your vehicle. He was like, I just got, I put my 
truck in park and I got out and I ran to your vehicle and it shows that in the bit of the dash cam footage that he just parks his vehicle and that's how we have constant dash cam footage of the entire thing because his truck was running the whole time and he ran to my vehicle he said when I got closer I heard you screaming he was like and I couldn't believe it because you were alive in there screaming meant that you were alive he was like so I tried the doors and obviously they were all jammed shut he was like, so the back passenger side was open, so I got in. There was glass everywhere, but I got in, and he was like, and you were screaming for help, and you kept saying, I think the car's on fire. And John kind of just explained, he was, that was my main fear as well, that with the damage done to your car, it was going to just go up in flames, so I was going to try to get you out, realizing very quickly that that wouldn't have been possible, and not safe to do so. He was like, so I stabilized your neck right away, and John knew to stabilize my neck, so... When I was saying for everyone thought that he was a retired firefighter, he wasn't. John just has ba basic first aid from his previous job. But John knew to stabilize my neck because John broke his neck at C1 in a motorcycle accident years prior to this. So that's how he knew to stabilize my neck the way that he did. Um, and so I remember his hands coming across my forehead and pulling me into the seat. And I put my hands up like this and I remember feeling big working hands. I remember saying like it felt like he had been a hard worker his whole life because of the way his hands felt and his voice never quickened, never hurried. He was calm this whole time. He had such an angelic voice and I remember just thinking like this man was sent to me here today because before John got my car I looked up at my broken windshield as you've seen in my other videos and I just I really thought that I was going to die there and so I just asked my papa and my grandpa please don't let me die alone in here and the second that I said that John got my vehicle. Like, I really thought there was a moment where I'm like, okay, if I die here, like, if this is it now, like, I just kind of, like, looked up and I was like, my papa had passed a few years ago and was very sad. We were a very tight family, very close. And I literally was just like, papa, please don't let me die. Vote in here. And as I said that, you got into my vehicle. And I don't know if that was fate, if that was just, but... You were exactly where you needed to be when you were that day. John got in my vehicle. And that was fate. That was a person at the place at the right time. That was somebody being sent to me. But John was exactly where he should have been the day that my accident happened. And I've never been more thankful for another human being in my whole life. And he was so calm the whole time. And we kind of joked. He said, you kept trying to call Ryan. Um, that first you got a hold of somebody else, but and he quickly hung up. And I don't know that he knows that, but one of my doctor friends at work, he was one of the last people I would have talked to before the accident. And it was him that I was calling. And I remember seeing that his name came up. I was like, oh shit, pardon my French, but oh shit. <laughs> I don't want him to know. I don't want him to be the person I'm on the phone with. He, what is he going to be able to do here? And I didn't want to stress him out. So I'm like, I need to call Ryan. And I kept trying, and John was like, no, just give me your phone, give me your phone, like, the police will call Ryan, it's okay. And I kept like, no, oh, wait, yes, you're right, you take my phone, you call Ryan. And John was like, my hands are busy, and he took my phone, and he just like threw it in the back seat. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember that, I remember that vividly because, um, I, well, I really thought, for some reason, you're in shock, but I thought that John was gonna call Ryan. But he just sat with me until, um... So, you know, EMS and everyone could get to us, and John helped them, like, he held the blanket over my face when they cracked the side uh, window and covered me with that, and he stayed with me until there was no reason for him to stay anymore. And he is, like, the one thing that I remember of being, like, a calm moment there, besides when stars came. When stars came, there was, like, okay, I'm in really good hands and well taken care of, but... I, I remember dreaming of John early on, and, like, just, like, the most random little, like, things of him and not ever of us in the accident I remember having this dream early on in the hospital that I don't think I've ever told anyone but it was I had this dream and I was walking down what kind of looked like a path of some sort and there was flowers all around it and I walked toward John and I just remember giving him a big hug and there he just smiled and that is a dream that I had and I'm and I kind of like held on to that for a while. So today when I met him, I told him this. <laughs> Me and John sat for three hours. We made him a really nice brunch. We were so excited for him to come. I'm gonna try to piece together a little bit of the video after that I have so you guys can see him, meet him. We took some pictures. 
Um, but it was a very emotional moment for both of us. John kept thanking me. He kept thanking me <laughs> for just being here and for being the person that I was. I'm like, John, you, this, I'm supposed to be thanking you, <laughs> not the other way around. And he just kept telling me, don't stop fighting. As hard as this is going to get at some times, don't stop fighting. He was like, because the universe had a reason for you to be here. And he's like, and it wasn't because of me. He I always figured the universe had a reason for you to live. Universe, he's like so you keep fighting and you keep being you and you just like he was just such a beautiful person I wish every day of my life that more people were like John he is just that good person that the world needs and it's people like him that need to be celebrated more he is a, like I said a hero in all aspects of there being a hero and he told us that he donates blood plasma every two weeks and he used to do ballroom dancing like he's lived this beautiful life and his smile lit up my entire living room the moment that he walked up the stairs and he smiled at me it just like it was something about being in his presence was so calming and even then he was so even keel the whole time there were moments where we were both emotional together when he described the accident and described not knowing that if I was going to live or not. How the moment he got in my vehicle, he had tears in his eyes because he knew what a fight that I was going to be in for because he had done it years before himself. Oh. <laughs> I felt so bad for you in my car. And I even said it when uh, that Amber Mabukin interviewed me. I, did, I had tears in my eyes for you. Because I remember uh, I had for four months, I was not allowed to move my head. I remember it was awful. He knew that I was going to be in for the most excruciating fight of my life. And he felt so deeply sorry for me in those moments that I would have to go through that. And he just, the, he's so empathetic and so gentle. He kept saying, like, what will I ever be able to give to this man that will be able to encompass a thank you? And... There aren't. There aren't words. There aren't gifts. There aren't gestures that would be enough. So instead, um, so instead we bought John a watch because I asked on TikTok, what will I be able to give to John as a gift? And someone said, why don't you give him a pocket watch or a watch, something that tells time because he gave you the gift of more time. So that's what we did. I gave John, we went out and bought him a watch. It couldn't be engraved because the back was really ornate, but we gave it to John um, as a token of our appreciation because he gave me more time here and in that gift bag I also gave him one of my halo candles I don't know if you guys remember those but they were one of the very first fundraisers that was done um and I thought it was very fitting because he's my angel and I was in a halo and it kind of just like really came full circle there so he gave him one of those and I just gave him a handwritten letter just explaining that um every time that I've been able to accomplish something whether it was moving my arms, standing up, talking, um, coming home from the hospital, every time there's been some kind of um, milestone in my life since the accident that I've been able to surpass, it's because of him. So I kind of showed him a little compilation of videos of my recovery, and we just sat there and we cried together. And he was very emotional at that, and... It was just so nice to be able to f show John what he's been able to do for me and my family. And that I am recovering well and as well as can be expected because of him. And that is the best gift I think I will ever be able to give John. Is never stop fighting, never stop trying to recover and trying to be the best Brianna that there is. So, thank you John. Thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you for my beautiful life because I am here today because of you. So thank you.